So speaking of climate change, I figured it might be nice if we all pushed ourselves collectively a little closer to suicide. Does that sound good? Is everyone, how does everyone feel about that? Like as a concept, if we all just got a little closer to killing ourselves, I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what this is. I don't know why it's like this, but for some reason, PragerU will sometimes put out videos that are squares, like they're in a one-to-one -one ratio. I don't know why this is. Why do they do this? But it's not even in a one-to-one -one ratio because look, they have up top, they have like the header and the, 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 the bottom here. But if you removed those, the original video would be in 16 by nine. Insta, Twitter, Facebook. Do Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook prefer one-to-one -one fucking video ratios? Twitter feed? Well, I don't... Okay, listen. I'm sorry. I fucking... When I use Twitter, I use fucking Gloria 16 by 9 like a goddamn Chad, okay? I don't know what kind of degenerate scumfuck subhuman trash uses fucking one-by-one -one video ratios. But you know what? Sure. Greta, take it away. People are suffering... People are dying. Damn. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. And all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? Because if you really understood the situation and still kept on failing to act, then you would be evil. And that I refuse to believe. Better fucking believe in. All right, I want to clarify my positions, okay? Listen, I hope I don't have to say this. Climate change is happening, obviously. Don't be fucking stupid. Like, come on. Obviously, climate change is happening. Everyone agrees on this. Don't be a fucking idiot, all right? Greta Thunberg is a is an activist, not like uh, um, like a scientist. So her job isn't to deliver like new information. Her job is to get people to care about pre-existing information. What's more, she is young. There's nothing wrong with having younger activists. Young people do activist work all the time. I've seen absolutely no substantive evidence that she's being used as a pawn in some grand Jewish conspiracy theory. Um, but if anyone has information about that, <laughs> send it to me, I guess, because that'd be pretty wild. Um, but yeah, young people do this shit all the time. And all the fucking alt-writers... All the alt-writers, 100%, who are like, oh, Greta Thunberg, it's disgusting to use children to promote a political gender. All these people, every single one of them liked, um, liked Soph. Remember Soph? Every single one of them is a Soph fan, okay? A 14-year-old who was literally being, like, abused and pushed, uh, uh, pushed scripts by her, uh, older brother to deliver a, a Nazi political narrative. Who is that? Soph, um, Lieutenant Corbus. She did videos, huge YouTube channel, little kid, talked about Nazi shit. All of her scripts were fed to her by her brother, product of abuse. What happened to Soph? I think she got kicked off YouTube. Isn't she literally an actual scientist? Didn't she originally get famous for being the youngest person with publication? Oh, if that's the case, I don't know. But fucking whatever. Let's do it. Let's find out what PragerU has an issue with. I'm ready. The popular idea of cutting our emissions in half in 10 years only gives us a 50% chance of staying below 1.5 degrees and the risk of setting off irreversible chain reactions beyond human control. How dare you pretend that this can be sold with just business as usual and some technical solutions? There will not be any solutions. Really padding that fucking runtime, Peggy. You in line with these figures here today. Because these numbers are too uncomfortable, and you are still not mature enough to tell it like it is. You are failing us. But the young people are starting to understand your betrayal. The eyes of all future generations... Jesus Christ, are... the first 80 seconds? I thought I might have to go back and look up the fucking clip so we can cross-reference it with whatever dumb shit PragerU is going to say, but evidently not. They'll just give us the entire fucking speech. Upon you. And if you choose to fail us, I say, we will never forgive you. All right, we're almost there. We will not let you get away with this. 
right here, right now, is where we draw the line. The world is waking up, and change is coming, whether you like it or not. Carbon we did it. Oh my god, no, no even fucking transition, we're just in? Emissions are rising, and faster than most scientists predicted. But many climate change alarmists seem to claim- Okay, we're going over all of this. Climate change alarmist. So all Greta has done and all most people are doing is reiterating information that is being published by uh, climate scientists. So alarmism, for those of you who know what words mean, is when you take a piece of information and you hyperbolize the threat it poses to society, like what PragerU does with uh, <clears throat> transgender people kneeling for the flag, teaching uh, any left-leaning political uh, agenda in um, uh, uh, any kind of academic setting, whether that be high school or university, uh, going vegan, um, uh, 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 like literally like every conceivable thing that PragerU talks about is alarmism um, because all of it is completely misinformed and based off misinformation and designed to get their dumb fuck audience of brainlets angry angry enough to vote red until they die, until they invariably perish um, either by suicide or by heart attack. So let's, so let's, let's go through it. We're going through it. We're doing it point by point. Claim that all climate change is worse than expected. This Wait, what? Alarmists seem to claim that all climate change is worse than expected. What? What the fuck does that mean? Climate alarmists believe all climate change is worse than expected. I literally don't know what that sentence mean means. All cli all climate change worse than ex you mean like all studies are worse. Th uh, this is like a meaningless statement. But yeah, let's let's go forward. This ignores that much of the data is actually more encouraging than expected. Show me that data. I'm ready to be shown that data. Yes, Arctic sea ice is melting faster than models expected, but mo I know this talking point. Models also predicted that Antarctic sea ice would decrease, yet Antarctic sea ice is increasing. Yes, sea levels are rising, but the rise is not accelerating. If anything, two recent papers, one by Chinese scientists published in January 2014 and the other by US scientists published in May 2013, have shown a small decline in the rate of sea level increase. Two very specific papers published in 2014 and 2013. So let's, um, here, wait, I'm gonna use a, a, a sick trick that I learned in, in, in college, okay? So, rate of sea level rising. How much will the oceans change? What is the rate of sea level rise? Has risen from about 0 0.1 inch per year in the 1990s to about 0 0.13 inches per year today. New study finds sea level rise accelerating. Ooh, oh, oh wait, I'm sorry. This is from a, um, this is from a biased source. It's from fucking NASA. Damn. And this is from 2018. Well, temporally, 2018 is after 2013 and 14. So you might reasonably expect this data is more recent, and given that it comes from one of the largest and most uh, well-esteemed scientific bodies to have ever existed, uh, it seems like this information is fairly reliable. Uh, okay, so that's, oh, whoop, that's not right. So that's one talking point, the sea level rise not accelerating, that is incorrect. It should be noted, by the way, that even if the rise in sea levels wasn't accelerating, that is not a meaningful rebuke to anything Greta Thunberg said. You'll notice that over the course of this video, and I haven't seen this video, but I know how these things tend to go, they are going to constantly pick apart little itty bitty points and oh, maybe this isn't as bad as it seems it's going to be, using misleading language and misinterpreting studies the entire way to arrive at the conclusion that actually it's all alarmist, everything is fine, there's nothing to worry about, minor changes, blah, blah. Um, while completely ignoring the sort of broader arguments. So let's learn about the ice melting. Vosh, this paper disproves what you've said. <laughs> Damn, peer reviewed and everything. <laughs> so ice melting levels. So which uh, ice sheets? 
Science rise in Antarctic sea ice is in Antarctic sea ice is actually increasing. How fascinating. How the Antarctic ice sheets are melting from above and below from 23 hours ago. Fascinating. Interesting. Here we can take a look. So here's from NASA again. So for those of you who don't remember, because, you know, you're silly. Arctic sea ice is up top. Antarctic sea ice is down below. Antarctic sea ice, that's the Australian ice, okay? Arctic sea ice, that's the Canadian ice. How they're different in Arctic sea ice. Here we go. Interesting. So here's the Arctic and Antarctic sea ice trend. So Arctic ice is decreasing constantly. Wow, what is, what is that? After 2014, there was a... What the fuck happened there? Oh my god, now it's in line with the Arctic sea ice. It's almost as though climate change means that huge differences in how weather patterns and heat maps move across the planet means there's going to be dissonance in how the ice sheets respond to it, an asynchronicity in the extent to which these ice sheets melt. This is the largest plummet in the total volume of ice in the Antarctic um, uh, uh, sheet that has ever been recorded in all of human history. And it happened while I was in college. Nice, damn. Ooh, so much optimism for that, that 2011 to 2014 period. And then, whoo, baby. Whoo, boy. Oof. This is one of the, huh, this is one of the ways that they get you, Prager you. You see, this video, this Prager you video, this came out a couple of days ago. But they're using outdated information because they point to the Antarctic sea, or sorry, the Antarctic ice levels being at the peak of what would then be a precedent to the greatest decline in human history in total amounts of ice locked up in there. Let's see. Uh, Google is doing pretty well for us so far. I have never Googled this data beforehand. So, you know, it's pre it's nice that all it takes is a, a cursory skip on the internet to disprove this propaganda piece. 14 and the other by U.S. scientists published in May 2013 have shown a small decline in the rate of sea level increase. This vid came out years ago. They just re-uploaded it and added in the Greta clip. They did that shit again? Holy shit, PragerU is so fucking lazy. They literally just added Greta talking and re-uploaded a pre-existing video? Well, that doesn't change any of my fucking arguments. All it means is that they're lazy. We're often being told that we're seeing more and more droughts. But a study published in March 2014 oh, no. in the journal Nature actually shows a decrease in the world's surface that has been afflicted by droughts since 1982. Facts like these are important. Let's look that up. That could well be true. I'm not sure. Again, even if everything he's saying is correct, notice how he's focusing on very tiny data points while, without addressing the broader point. He even acknowledged earlier that sea le ice levels are decreasing and sea levels are rising. Even if everything he was saying is true, the facts are so incontrovertible that he would still be conceding the point that the Earth is dying. So, let's look that up. That's not how trout is spelled. Droughts and climate change. This is from the Climate Reality Project. I have no idea what this website is. Climate Reality Project. Just making sure this isn't a biased source or, you know, within a reasonable level of bias. Nonprofit org. Came into being in July 2011, Alliance for Climate Protection, the Climate Project, both of which were founded by Al Gore. Maybe that means it's biased to some people. Um, 24 Hours of Reality, Overview, History, Climate Project, Recent History, Activities, No Controversy Section, No Indication that this is a super biased think tank. Okay, I think we're okay. So... Top Climate Change Concerns by Region. 
for Latin. So here's uh, droughts and water shortages. That seems to be a really big issue for a lot of folks. What is the connection between climate change and drought? Differing uh, effects started to link more intense droughts to climate change. That's because as more greenhouse gas emissions are released into the air, causing air temperatures to rise, um, more moisture evaporates from lands, lakes, rivers, and other bodies of water. Warmer temperatures also increase evaporation in plant soils, which affect plant life and can reduce rainfall even more. When rainfall does come to drought-stricken areas, the drier soil it hits are less able to absorb the water, increasing the likelihood of flooding. This doesn't give me a chart. I want to look at a nice chart. <laughs> Prager use Prager use video. This is their source. Okay. Drought monitor. Nice, nice. Drought caused by drought. Okay, here we go. Average drought conditions in the contiguous 48 states. Okay, so this is just American. Hold on. Oh, let's see. Vosh, I did some research on this guy. The Copenhagen Consensus is a U.S.-based nonprofit think tank with the greatest donors being chemical companies like Procter & Gamble, the Co Foundation, and the usual Ghoul Gallery. He pays himself nearly $1 million every year. Damn. No way. You can't get reliable climate info. Hey, shut the fuck up. You can't get reliable climate information from think tank leaders who pay themselves exorbitant amount of money to regurgitate lies from industrial leaders who benefit from um, from not addressing uh, climate change. Wow. In Whoa. Incredible. It looks like for the most part, the um, at least in the United States of America here, drought conditions. It looks like, for the most part, drought ha hasn't changed substantially, at least within the United States of America. Also, this guy Bjorn Lokom has been accused of scientific dishonesty and wrote the book The Skeptic Environmentalist, which contained deliberately misleading data and had flawed conclusions. Whoo! That's a, that's a big section dedicated to this guy lying. After the publication of The Skeptical Environmentalist, Lomberg was formally accused by, of scientific dishonesty by a group of environmental scientists who brought a total of three complaints against him to the Danish Committees on Scientific Dishonesty, a body under Denmark's Ministry of Science, Technology, and Innovation. Lomberg was asked whether he regarded the book as a debate publication and thereby not under the purview of the DCSD or as a scientific work. He chose the latter, clearing the way for the inquiry that followed. The charges claim the skeptical environmentalist contained deliberately misleading data and flawed conclusions. Due to the similarity of the complaints, the DCSD decided to proceed on three cases of one investigation. In 2003, the DCSD released a ruling that sent a mixed message, finding the book to be scientifically dishonest through misrepresentation of scientific facts, but Lomberg himself not guilty due to his lack of expertise in the fields in question. Perfect. That's so not only was the book riddled with mis misinformation, the court concluded he was too stupid and ignorant to even be found guilty of lying. Ooh. Oh, baby, that's a good one. And here he is for PragerU, right on par with the uh, fucking with his own intellectual character. Important because a one-sided focus on worst-case stories is a poor foundation for sound policies. Remember, I'm a Ben Shapiro fan. I love me some facts. I hate me some feelings. So they brought on a habitual liar who was found to be not only dishonest, uh, but too stupid to even be accused of dishonesty in a formal academic setting. And he's a think tank leader who takes money from billionaires who have a vested uh, monetary interest in not acknowledging climate change. Phenomenal. Hurricanes are likewise used as an example of things getting worse. Oh, please. Oh, please tell me hurricanes aren't getting worse with climate change. Please, God, do it. I'm ready. I'm ready for this talking point. Look at the U.S., where we have the best statistics. If we adjust for population and wealth, hurricane damage during the period of 1900 to 2003. What the fuck does it? Wait, wait, wait. This is a complete misdirection. 
Hurricane damage has nothing to do with the severity of the hurricane. What if we've gotten better at responding to hurricanes? What if we're better with, we have now like uh, TVs and radios that can broadcast alert signals to our cell phones. We have shelters. We have better ways of responding, better medical care. Yeah, hurricane, yes. Um, what if uh, what if we've just gotten better? This is uh, this is complete mis This is literally nothing to do. So, oh, hurricanes are getting worse under the United uh, uh, under climate change. Well, you know, if you look at the United States uh, uh, economic damage adjusted for capita and uh, for population, you will actually find that uh, per year the total amount of damage done by the uh, uh, hurricanes has decreased uh, uh, since the the early twentieth uh, century. Therefore, meaning that uh, uh, hurricanes are not getting worse. Teen actually decreased slightly at the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> this data was already not worthwhile and it was less convincing than I expected it to be. When climate conference in Lima, Peru in December 2014, attendees were told that their country should cut carbon emissions to avoid future damage from storms like Typhoon Hagupit, which hit the Philippines during the conference killing at least 21 people and forcing more than a million into shelters. Yet the trend for strong typhoons around the Philippines have actually declined since- Why just the Philippines? Why just the major typhoons in the western North Pacific? Why all these hyper-specific statistics that don't actually point to the broader trend? Let's take a look. Hurricane frequency. Climate change. Hurricanes and climate change. Although scientists are uncertain whether climate change will lead to an increase in the number of hurricanes, warmer ocean temperatures and higher sea levels are expected to intensify their impacts. Models project a 45 to 87 percent increase in the frequency of category four and five hurricanes. Holy shit! And I know that these are like, uh, the MAGA hats are all America first, but keep in mind that America is a very industrious and industrialized nation with pretty strong infrastructure. Even though we may not experience a boatload of deaths every time there's a catastrophically powerful hurricane, that does not mean there aren't other parts of the world that will see hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of deaths due to typhoons and hurricanes. 45 to 87 percent. Jesus fucking Christ. Rainfall rates during these storms are projected to increase by about 20 percent, a 2 to 11 percent increase in maximum wind speeds. Records show large year to year changes in the number and intensity of these storms. Damn. Well, that's another point blown the fuck out with a simple Google search and looking at the top search result from a government website. Wait, that was a government website, was it? Or was it a nonprofit website? Nonprofit. Cli Center for Climate and Energy Solutions. A very reputable nonprofit. Wonderful. Again, note, this is something, this is actually a really good point to take from the debates that you guys have. If you're ever arguing with like megachuds or whatever, always remember, you have to make sure you're aware of what points you're actually arguing. So it's really, really easy to look at this and go like, oh, obviously this is bad, this is bad. But even if everything this person was saying was true, which is not, that's not the case, he's lying through his teeth to us. But even if he wasn't lying, even if everything he said was correct, none of these things debunk the central premise. Not even close. According to a study published in 2012 by the Journal of Climate. Again, we're told that all things are getting... I bet you that journal specifically said the number of hurricanes may be decreasing, but their severity is increasing slightly. And all this person took from it was, see, the number of hurricanes are decreasing slightly. This is one of the reasons why I scoff at people like the alt-hype. Having an appearance of basing your, um, your arguments off of data mean nothing if you're a biased hack whose methodology um, uh, 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 leads you to, to dishonestly interpreting that data. Worse, but the facts don't support this. Damn. This does not mean global warming is not real or a problem. 
Which is funny because the conservative ticket has been for quite a long time that global warming isn't real and isn't a problem. Notice how they back up to that seamlessly. Uh, uh, Trump literally platformed on um, climate change is a myth perpetuated by the Chinese to make American indu uh, industry non-competitive. And the Republican Party backed him up on that, and he had to begrudgingly move away from that. And now these people are acting as though they were, oh, no, I, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm not saying it's not a problem. Ben Shapiro did the exact same thing. He used to be uh, a climate change denier, but then he, um, but then he went from, oh, well, um, I might be willing to admit that, uh, you know, climate change is real. And, um... You know, I might even be willing to admit that, you know, some of it was, was caused by humans. And uh, one, one might even say that um, humans have, have made the climate worse. Uh, it's... <laughs> they, they back up. These people in 20 years, as the world is being ravaged by, by climate disasters, will be the ones saying, uh, why didn't we act sooner? They have, no, they have absolutely no shame. But the one-sided story of alarmism makes us lose focus. If we want to help wow. the world's poor, who are the most threatened by natural disasters... Keep in mind that all of his data on severity and frequency and what have you, it all correlates to America. Oh, America is taking less damage. What about other parts of the world? You know, not every country on Earth... I'm sorry to say this. Not every country on Earth uh, uh, was, is, 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 is blessed with a socioeconomic circumstance that allows them to, uh, you know weather category five hurricanes without suffering catastrophic infrastructural damage. It turns out that's, that's an issue elsewhere in many parts of the world. It's less about cutting carbon emissions than it is about pulling them out of poverty. The best way- Excuse me? If we want to help the world's poor, who are the most threatened by natural disasters, it's less about cutting carbon emissions than it is about pulling them out of poverty. So this is a false dichotomy. It is possible to improve the... So, for, so actually, this is wrong in like 18 ways, okay? So for one, the um, neoliberal economic policies of the IMF and the World Bank, which PragerU support, which are introducing liberal reform in countries around the world, have uh, perpetuated poverty and kept them in poverty because it makes these countries utterly dependent on, um, on uh, uh, foreign exports for their own economy. Disincentivizing protectivist industry and more socialized policy because even though it might help that country, it doesn't help our business interests. So for this person to pretend that they care about lifting the global poor out of poverty is hysterical and worthy of a Minecraft attack with a diamond sword against one with no armor when you know they're on low health because they just survived a skeleton attack and are now waiting for their health to regenerate after eating bread. But in addition to that, it's a false dichotomy. You can help the global poor out of poverty while also cutting carbon emissions. It's a little bit harder because you can't just dump oil on the problem, dump coal on the problem and expect it to solve itself. It takes a little bit more effort, but it has a lovely upside. And that upside is that we don't literally kill the planet. And as it turns out, both saving the planet from climate change and lifting the global poor out of poverty are very important to the global poor. It doesn't mean very much if you live in Southeast Asia and you're finally starting to get a living wage and then you have to move to refugee shelters inland because the sea levels have risen. It doesn't mean much to the global poor if the average level of... Um, of, 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 of economic well-being increases marginally from year to year, and this is compensated for by typhoons and hurricanes that obliterate your state's infrastructure and make you reliant on foreign aid that keeps you in the place of poverty you were in previously. This is a false dichotomy from a person who wants neither. They want neither to help the planet nor to help the poor. The best way to see this is to look at the world's death from natural disasters over time. I'm ready. In the Oxford University database... For Again? 
Not relevant to the point that's being had, there have been massive infrastructural and medical advancements over the past century. Even if fewer people per capita, or even fewer people in total, have died, what the fuck kind of point is that supposed to make? The death rates from floods, extreme temperatures, droughts, and storms, the average in the first part of last century was more than 130 dead every year per million people. Since then, the death rates have dropped 97% to a new low in the 2010s of less than four per million. Um, again, so not only is adjusting this per capita hysterical, considering the population increase between those two points in time, not only does this not address the argument in any way, shape, or form, but there have been so many advances, so many medical and infrastructural advances over the past century that trying to determine the severity of these instances by death rate is hysterical and every point here is wrong floods are happening more often we've had a uh, record temperatures every year for a decade running droughts seem to be have like leveled off and storms are getting worse so again greta thunberg didn't go up there in front of the un and say um Hey here, hey everybody, hey, did you know that over the past hundred years the per capita death rate from these specific types of climate disasters has increased? That is in fact not what she has said. All right, Jesus Christ, I'll check the fucking person. God damn you people. Can we not do this every single time some new dipshit wanders into chat? Check if they're flamenco. Can we not? Can we refrain? It's not flamenco, though they could be using a uh, they could be using a um, a VPN, so it doesn't even matter to check. The dramatic decline is mostly due to economic developments that help nations withstand catastrophes. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly my point. Wait, he just made my point right there for me. The decrease in death has nothing to do with climate getting better or more survivable. It has to do with infrastructure and medical developments. What? So wait, what was the what the fuck was the, was the point in bringing it up in the first place? If you're rich like Florida, a major hurricane might cause plenty of damage to expensive buildings, but it kills few people and causes only a temporary dent in economic output. If a similar hurricane hits a poorer country like the Philippines or Guatemala, it kills many more people and can devastate the economy. So. So, and the solution to this is to simultaneously help uplift these countries, something that PragerU does not want to have done, while preventing these uh, climate disasters that will cause the economic damage in the first place. Also, if this person is unironically saying that we can advance the infrastructural development of the global poor to the extent that they can, like, not die from climate disasters in the same way that Americans don't die from climate disasters, they're fuck. that's fucking... That's fucking hysterical. Those timelines are way off. It takes decades. In some countries, like 40 or 50 years, like some parts of the world are pretty fucked right now. It's going to take a really fucking long time for that level of infrastructure to be built up in a best case scenario with foreign help. Because they have like no internal civil society, no means by which, no resources to exploit. And they're already being fucked over by uh, uh, neoliberal transnational corporations. The idea that that can happen, that time frame can take place before these places are ravaged by climate change is fucking hysterical. Let's be clear, climate change is not worse than we thought. That it is, it, uh, it, yes, actually, current projections are worse than projections were 10 years ago, yes. Doesn't mean it's not a reality or not a problem, it is. Then why did the party that all of the um, propaganda you're spouting here is based from say that it wasn't a reality and wasn't a problem as much as a few years ago. Some people are still saying it. But the narrative that the world's climate is changing from bad to worse is unhelpful alarmism. That it's also true and supported by literally all scientific data coming out on the subject. Prevent us from focusing on smart solutions. A well-meaning environmentalist might argue that because climate change is a reality, why not ramp up the rhetoric and focus on the bad news to make sure the public understands its importance? 
So what this is right here is this is uh, this is lamp shading the enemy's uh, argument. Um, everything that this hypothetical person just said right here, right here, see, I'm pointing, is completely correct. Climate change is a reality. Its projections indicate that irreparable damage will be done to the planet in a very short time frame. Everything is getting worse very quickly at incredible rates. Everyone agrees on this, 100%. So yes, there is no good news to publish. There's only bad news. And the consequence of not focusing on that bad news is literally the death of the planet. So by lampshading this argument, this person is indicating that there is in fact something wrong with it, when there is nothing wrong with it. It's a good argument. But that's exactly what we've done for the past 20 years. Yet- Well, that's what half the political aisle has done for the past 20 years. And even then, not really. It's not like the Democrats have really done much to combat climate change. The Republicans have denied it outright. So, no, that's not the case. Despite dramatic headlines, apocalyptic documentaries, and annual climate summits. All of which are true. Everything is happening. Carbon emissions continue to rise, especially in rapidly developing countries like India, China, and many African nations. Ye y yeah Wait, no shit? Environmental activists continue to say it's a problem and politicians and big business continue to ignore it? Yeah? In incredible. Really? That's what that's what's happening? Alarmism has encouraged the pursuit of a one-sided climate policy of trying to cut carbon emissions by subsidizing wind farms and solar panels. Yet well, that was a policy of trying to cut carbon emissions by subsidizing wind farms and solar panels. So, no. Again, alarmism implies that there's any level of untruth to the arguments being made by climate scientists, which is hilarious, considering the fact that the person who is narrating this video has literally had, has literally been condemned by a scientific council for um, scientific inaccuracy, but then not punished for it because he was too ignorant of the subject to be held accountable. Um, and... B, no, climate policy has generally been pretty multilateral. Politicians just only listen to the simplest answers. That's admittedly an issue. And subsidizing wind farms and solar panels are, in their own way, helpful. This isn't even a particularly extreme solution, uh, just the wind farms and solar panels. There are way more extreme ways to pursue this. Like, for example, acknowledging the fact that 70% uh, of all global climate emissions are emitted by 100 per, uh, companies. There's 100 companies. That means there are 100 CEOs. You could fit all of them in my house at a very crowded dinner party. 100 human beings in charge of the economic infrastructure that causes 70% of global climate change or carbon emissions. You could fit them all in my house. You could probably fit 15 of them here in this room. They'll just have to stack together. Oh yeah, Flavier too. Uh, PragerU has in the past said that climate change isn't even real. It's like, they just lie on every step back. Every conceivable step back that they go. First, climate change isn't real. Hoax perpetuated by the Chinese, such and such. Now it is real, but everyone's too alarmist. And now it is real and it is a problem. But hey, people are being still a little bit too extreme when they talk about it. Always, always backing up. Always, always taking money from their corporate masters. Let's finish this video because it's getting exhausting. Yet today, according to the International Energy Agency, only about 0.4% of global energy consumption comes from solar photovoltaics and windmills. And what, what argument is this? Yeah, we need to invest more. Wait, why would you make the argument that people are being alarmist and then criticize the people trying to do something for not doing enough? Those are opposite arguments. I agree, we need to invest more in it. Also, nuclear power. Guys, we need nuclear power. I'm real sorry. We need to get over this shit. Nuclear power. We need like a big chunk of global energy consumption to come from nuclear power. Big fucking chunk of it. What would you say about Destiny's argument that those hundred companies probably produce consumer goods we all use? Of course they produce consumer goods we all use. What? Absolutely. I'm not saying you could just delete those 100 companies um, without, like, causing anything. I'm just saying, do you really think those consumer goods are worth more than the habitability of the planet? Yeah, even amidst the 100 companies, it's 20 companies that emit 33% of all carbon emissions. 
And even with exceptionally optimistic assumptions about future deployment of wind and solar, the International Energy Agency expects that these energy forms will provide a minuscule 2.2% of the world's energy by 2040. What, what are these arguments? Do we need to do more or do we need to do less? What the fuck are you talking about? In other words, for at least the next two decades, solar and wind energy are simply expensive, feel-good measures that will have an imperceptible climate impact. I don't necessarily agree with that. They do good do good work, and you'd be amazed with how much uh, good work scientists can do if their projects are funded properly. Um, but in terms of like a global solution, I agree, nuclear power is necessary. 100%, yeah. We have problems with storing nuclear waste. That is an issue that needs to be addressed 100%. Oh yeah, no, we needed to start building those plants like a really long time ago, Boxu. Now, storing the, uh, the, the leftovers, the waste from nuclear power plants is, is a problem. It's a legitimate issue. But I would put it very far below the problem of our planet is literally going to fucking yeet us off its surface. Exactly, Cyberwitch Lexi. Oh yeah, that was a good one. I don't know if any of you saw, but Paul Joseph Watson recently said something like, Oh, so climate scientists have determined climate change is happening, huh? Well, then there's no point in funding their projects then. We've already found it's happening. Excellent. These people do all deserve to die. I'm not saying you should kill them. That would be very immoral. Political violence against people who are literally perpetuating propaganda that will lead to the destruction of the planet and the death of billions? Don't do that. That would be very immoral. When in history has it been okay to kill people who are responsible for disseminating messages that lead to the death of millions of people? When it... We don't do that. Nobody does that. I can't think of a single example of us doing it. Therefore, we shouldn't do it in the future. However... Boy, do they deserve to die. Everyone knows this is happening. Nobody believes it isn't. The people who say it isn't are lying um, to serve corporate interests. It's really that simple. Everyone knows that it's happening. Businesses, big business, have been taking out um, protections against climate change since the fucking 80s. They, they all know this is taking place. It's well known. There's nobody to convince. This isn't a rhetoric game. There are the people who know it's happening but lie about it, or lie about its severity, or call the climate scientists alarmists. And there's nothing we can do to change those people's minds except ensure they stop getting their paychecks from the people they're getting their paychecks from. And then there are the millions and millions of unfathomably stupid people, mostly Americans, who believe those lies, in spite of all evidence. And those people maybe can be convinced, but it doesn't really matter, does it? It doesn't really matter how much popular support there is for recognizing the validity of climate science papers or the fact that the planet may well be made uninhabitable, that if we reach a certain point within our atmosphere, there will be a cataclysmic and irreversible um, reciprocal effect, the carbon dioxide inviting more gas into itself, creating a feedback loop that will eventually lead to the surface of this planet being scorched and humanity being unable to survive. This is all a very possible outcome from all of this. None of that really matters, it doesn't matter how popular measures against that are, as long as the people who are in charge have a monetary interest in seeing this kept quiet or seeing it decried as alarmism. It's one of the reasons why I'm a socialist, you know. If all of these businesses were collectively owned. That is to say, everyone who worked there had a piece of the pie. There's no CEO, there's no stockholders. There are still managers and higher tiers of managers, of course, like there's, you know, still an administration within the business, but everyone there shares a piece of the pie. The beautiful thing about that system is, who's going to suffer the most from climate change? I can tell you this, it's not the billionaires who are already building, have you seen the articles on billionaires chic climate change disaster shelters. You know they're building them, don't you? All the billionaires who are responsible for this state of affairs, you know they know the end times are coming. And they've got the loveliest bunkers, the best bunkers money can buy. Beautiful lead and concrete line generators and oil power, energy to last them decades afterwards, food and ah, security staff. It's... Ah, 
Really not so much of a bunker, more of an underground fortress, which is nice. And um, they have that. We suffer the most. Us, the, the real people, the proletarian, the workers, we suffer the most. And we suffer the most because we don't have the money to avoid the consequences of climate change. We just have to live with what happens. And if life is made impossible or the surface of the planet is made uninhabitable for us, we are the ones who will suffer first. It will actually be, by the way, uh, the poorer folk from the rest of the world that will suffer first. But we'll be shortly after. And anyway, if this company was um, collectively owned, that means the people who own it, the people who make decisions about it, will be like you and me. Not some uber billionaire whose interests are completely divorced from the interests of the general population. They'll be like you and me. And these decisions will be made democratically. So the difference between a billionaire single-handedly being able to push for super PACs and lobbying groups to deny climate change because they can survive it and they benefit from it, and a company of hundreds of thousands of working people democratically deciding to push an agenda that will lead to many of their own deaths and the death of their children and their grandchildren, well, I bet you anything the former will lead to a greater likelihood of climate change denialism being pushed. It's one of the reasons why I'm a socialist. I think that socialism could solve this. Now, are we going to have a socialist revolution in time to stop this? No, of course not. We needed one a century ago. Um, but, you know, it's nice to imagine what could have been, right? It's nice to imagine. Anyway, how about we finish this shit show, huh? My donos are still being weird. Holy shit, Hale Kvarforth with the $50. What the fuck, comrade? Pisses me the fuck off when big companies act morally superior by telling regular people to be careful with the environment when they do jack shit. Fuck yes, absolutely. Big companies and all that. I'll go over donos after this video. If they all pop up properly? Fucking stupid ass shit. Instead, we should focus on investing in research and development of green energy. Damn, then why is it that you have... So... Why did you begin this by saying that that green energy is worthless and not going to accomplish anything? And why is your political party constantly stopping the investment in these things? They're like, this is completely two-faced. Prager, you literally like, hey, no fucking money, no fucking money to green energy research. Fuck these fucking ass cucks. We're going to invest in big oil, big coal. Uh, and then they turn around to make a video saying, oh, well, hmm, in spite of the alarmism, you know to lower its costs. So we really should invest in this. It, including China and India. We urgently need a more balanced climate conversation if we are to make sensible choices and pick the right climate policy that can actually help fix climate change. Cool. Neat. Nice meme. So yeah, um, that's, that's a good meme. Lied about basically every point. All the points that weren't lies were irrelevant to the broader discussion. Um, said that everyone else is being alarmist and not proposing good solutions. Again, a lie. And then goes forth to propose a solution that he and his political constituents have directly blocked. And he is, to top it all off, and I love repeating it one more time, somebody whose book on climate change was so dishonest that he was uh, that three inquiries were submitted to a, uh, a council to try him for deliberate dishonesty. And they found his book scientifically inaccurate, but he was so ignorant of the subject that he had wrote on, they didn't feel comfortable um, punishing him for it. With Prager University. 